Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Cadence Independent Media Production. If you're just joining us, here we do hacks, we talk about tone, we do myth busting, we do all kinds of little like comparison-y kind of things and checking stuff out. It's all about sound all the time. And today, we are talking about my best friend, gaff tape. <laughs> Now, if you are not just joining us, if you've been watching our channel for a while, you'll notice a stark lack of gaff tape in a lot of the videos. Um, and that is intentional because we're talking a lot about tuning and we're talking a lot about overtones and pitches and things like that. And sometimes we need to get as much kind of racket and noise out of the drum as possible so that we can hear those things that we're talking about. And sometimes gaff tape is for muffling, sometimes it's for other things on the kit, you know, there's a lot of uses. Um, and today we're gonna to talk about a few of my favorites. Thanks as always to our presenting sponsor, Promark by Daddario for helping us out. We're rocking Firegrain Rebound Acorn 5A Hickories today. And what we're hitting with them is the House Pearl Masters Custom Kit. Um, we got an Acrolyte today, sort of the standard fare, but what we are doing is modifying the tone with a few uses for gaff tape that aren't just sticking tape on the drum. The great thing about gaff tape is you can use it to affix a lot of different stuff to the drum that's gonna do different kinds of muffling and tone modification uh, concepts. Now, before any of that, actually, we should hit the drums and see how they sound before we start putting stuff on them. So lots of overtones, wide open, super loud. Um, they're tuned in the mid to low range with the toms. The snare is up there, but not crazy. It's a, it still feels kind of you know forgiving when I hit it. And we're gonna start with just putting a piece of paper on the batter head. Now this is real simple. Um, I'm not 100% sure of the original origin of this. I started doing it just because I needed somewhere to put a piece of music when I was on a gig and I had one piece of sheet music. I'd set it on the snare drum so I could look at it if I needed to check it out. Destroyed my music, started putting it on other places, a music stand for instance. Uh, but it has a really interesting effect on the overall tone of the drum, especially for lower volume things if you're thinking about kind of old style R&B Motown stuff or any situation where you're gonna do less miking, maybe play a little softer, lean on compression, things like that. And uh, yeah, it's pretty groovy, so let's see what it sounds like. All we did, piece of notebook paper, very small piece of tape. The small piece of tape is uh, intentional also because we don't want the tape influencing the sound too much. Um, and the other thing is we wanna be able to get it off the drum quickly. This can actually be a sort of take it on, take it off kind of thing. And you can stick it to the side of your floor tom or you know wherever's convenient when you're not using it. You could maybe even like tape it to the rim and flip it off if you wanna do that. So I think of this as a studio trick mostly, but it definitely works for live stuff. Um, if you've ever used any kind of uh, drum head like material or any uh, 
you know, like things you've purchased for getting a fat snare drum sound or a deader snare drum sound. This is a much lighter version of that same kind of thing. So there's less volume loss, but it's also not very durable. So it's a quick fix thing, uh, but I do do it in the studio all the time. Number two, this one a lot of us have probably seen, which is taping a Kleenex or like a, you know, tissue paper straight onto the drum head. This is a thing that I would probably leave on um, if I'm in a studio situation where I have multiple snare drums and I want one to be the dead drum for that day, which is actually usually my Acrylite. Um, I sometimes do this and just set it aside and then it's almost like a, like a physical sample that I'll go get and use and then take away again. Basically all this boils down to is getting a piece of tissue paper, however much or however little you want, and taping it down to the head. As you can see from the overhead, this is a pretty small piece of tissue paper and not a lot of tape. I didn't do all four sides. If you're only gonna do three sides, put the non-taped side away from you so you don't catch it with your stick and flip it off the drum while you're playing and getting excited. This is the item off the drum. Um, I, I, I put it on the drum and then I just peeled it off so I could show you. And uh, it's just one Kleenex um, out of like one of those, you know, to-go containers. Um, and those are kind of nice because if you have a box of Kleenex, you know, they, they sort of fan out when you pull them out. And with the to-go ones from like the gas station or whatever, they're already folded like this, which is kind of convenient. And then, yeah, I put the no tape side kind of at the rim and then the rest of it just sort of sticks out from there. Um, you can put it toward you if you're going to be playing brushes so you don't run into it. Or you can put it away from you if you're going to be playing close to the rim, uh, rim shots like for funk music or something like that. So this is an oldie but a goodie. Um, an awful lot of people have done it. There is a video on stage of Steve Gadd doing this um, in the 70s and the 80s for sure. It's all over the place. Um, there's definitely stuff taped to like James Gadson's kit in Bill Withers' videos. Um, it's part of the sound, it's a quick fix, it's cheap. <laughs> and uh, yeah, definitely useful. Now let's go one step further into tissue paper territory and we're actually going, <laughs> we're just gonna tape a package of tissue paper to the head. Um, there are lots of anecdotes about people taping packs of cigarettes to the head. Um, different things that are basically small and box shaped but lightweight. The way to do it that made the most sense to me was rather than taping over the top of the box, we actually made sort of like a ring of tape and used like flattened it against the bottom of it as you'll see to just kind of stick it flat to the drum, uh, which is also convenient because you can pull that right off and stick it right back on again. go Kleenex, little piece of rolled over tape on the bottom, stuck it by the edge. Uh, it's a little more dramatic of an effect than just one tissue paper. It's, you know, however many of this is. But yeah, it works pretty good and it, it definitely, uh, if you're doing like a Ringo thing or whatever, it's, uh, it's right in the ballpark for that. I noticed with that, there's more mass, so it is fattening up the tone a little bit more. Um, I didn't really adjust the snare wires for any of these, so basically what you're hearing across the board is just the effect of the stuff on there. Um, and then choices that I'm making about how hard I'm gonna hit it based on what I'm hearing. If you have things that are barely taped to the drum and you're smashing the drum, you risk it coming off. So uh, like with the package of Kleenex or maybe with the paper, I'm not really smashing it as hard as I can, but you can hit it pretty hard. It's probably not gonna go anywhere, but it's worth mentioning. All right, now here's the new one. Um, we saw this in a video of Paul Lyam doing a session where he was demonstrating the way that session guys in Nashville um, and that part of the world kind of like do demo sessions and do record sessions and they work super fast. So the tones have to be perfect out of the gate um, in this particular instance, I think they played the song one time and nailed it, which is mind boggling. And I noticed something on his kit that was uh, clearly there for some kind of muffling effect on the batter heads or some kind of effect. And we got in real close and looked at it and discovered that it was gaff tape and a cymbal felt stuck to one end of the gaff tape. So this is the item from the video. As you can see, it's gaff tape, um, maybe like four inches long, something like that, maybe five inches long. It's two layers thick, which I did out of necessity because in order to hold it in place, it needed to be a little stiffer than one piece. On the other side, 
we have a run-of-the-mill symbol felt just kind of stuck to one end. I folded these corners in so that you could make sure that they wouldn't stick to the head when it was playing. And then basically what you do here is you strap this to the rim away from you and make sure that this is laying on the head and then it kind of jumps up in the air when you strike the drum and then lays back down again. All right, so let's give this a quick listen and then we'll talk about it. Now, a term that gets thrown around a lot is a gate, or a noise gate, different kinds of gates, um, both in live and in mostly studio situations. For those of you that are unfamiliar with what this is, it is a device in the signal chain that is designed to open up like a gate and let sound through at a certain decibel level or frequency range, something like that, and then at a certain point, the gate closes and cuts off the end of the sound. This can be a hard cut, it can be a gradual cut, and these are all adjustments that are made to the device. This is basically like an analog gate for your toms. The further out it extends onto the head, the larger the effect. If you put it near the edge, it's a very minimal effect. And what it does is it opens like a gate when you hit it, and then it throws back down and suppresses things. So you're shortening the sound, you're still getting all the overtones on the initial strike, which is very important because you don't want to lose that power, especially in the louder situations. But then on the other hand, in those loud situations, you might not want that tom to ring for days. So this is a kind of incredible solution for that. It also, depending on your tuning scheme, can do a surprising amount of suppression of crosstalk from the snare and kick to the toms, which can be troublesome in the studio sometimes. You hit the snare and everything starts ringing, because when you're not hitting the toms, these are laying right on the head, almost like you've got your finger on it, um, which is just brilliant. Also, if you haven't seen, or if you have seen, if you haven't, you can go back and check it out, our video about putting cotton balls in the floor tom, that's a little bit of a gatey thing for the rezzo head on the inside that you know you don't have to worry about, it's inside, it stays there. And similarly, they kind of jump in the air when you hit the drum and then lay back down again. This is like an external version of that, basically, for the batter heads that's a little more mild um, and comes off super easy, which is just incredibly convenient. Now, just for a really kind of clear, clear comparison, we're gonna do a quick back-to-back -back, um, from nothing all the way through all the muffling schemes. So as you can hear, it's a lot of slight differences, some dramatic differences, all very useful, all very inexpensive, um, which is fantastic. I mean, even cymbal felts, not very expensive. So these are things you can experiment with without having to break the bank, find things that work for you, all that type of stuff. Now, quick public service announcement. Gaff tape and duct tape are not the same thing. They are completely different animals. 
and uh, I want to make sure that you at least know what's going to happen if you stick gaff tape to your drums, especially if you have coated heads. Gaff tape is meant to come off and not leave a residue and not pull off what you stuck it to. It's still plenty adhesive, but it's a totally different kind of glue. It's cloth in it. It's a little thicker, which is also nice if you're using it as a muffler, like you know, little pinches of it on there. It does a lot more. Um, and that also means that it's a little more expensive, probably, not a ton, but duct tape on the other hand, just, I don't recommend it. It's gonna pull your coating off, it's gonna leave residue everywhere. Um, yeah, it's problematic. If you've ever had to get duct tape off of a stand on a backline kit that somebody put on there, I, I mean, I started carrying a pocket knife just to get that stuff off, because, you know, it's, <laughs> once it's on there, it is on there. <laughs> It is also worth noting that if you're in a venue or a studio or a concert hall, they're probably gonna have gaff tape. They might not have a ton of it or it might be you know, different looking than you're used to, but they're gonna know what it is and they're gonna know if they have it and they're probably gonna let you have some too. So fun little side hack also about this um, that came straight from Ben just now. Um, it's good to have a Sharpie on you in case you need to write something down. I keep a Sharpie in my bag. This happens to be a silver one, which is actually great for writing on gaff tape. Like if you need to put gaff on a piece of gear or a case like at a festival and make sure that nobody walks off because the cases all look the same. And then you can just get some gaff off of a roll and wrap it around the Sharpie because it's not that sticky. You'll be able to get it off. So it can act as sort of like a temporary roll for storage of gaff tape, which now I'm going to totally do because that's brilliant and I never ever thought of that before. <laughs> All right, that about wraps it up for uh, gaff tape today. There's lots more you can do with it. I can think of dozens of other ways to use it. Um, we didn't even get into what you can do to symbols with it, um, which is a lot of useful stuff we'll get to in the future. So thank you for watching. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and please hit the notification bell down there so that you get a notification when we put a new video up, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time every Tuesday, whether you get a notification or not. And thanks, of course, to Promark by D'Addario, our presenting sponsor, for helping us out. And lastly, I'm definitely curious what you do with gaff tape in your life, in your professional life. Um, sound things, muffling things, everything else. Whatever you got, let us know.